This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at Chipping Norton. But before that, this video is brought to you by Dozer and Alpha Tryon. Thank you for being Farm Barons. So the Chipping Norton map can be found over at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you some of the description. Welcome to Chipping Norton, a fictional map based on a popular location in the English Codsworths. This map includes a custom England-based crop counter, three farms, one cattle shed, and one cow pasture, as well as two sheep pastures, large industrial estate filled with factories, Contracts are available on the map. There is a large quarry with lots of stone to be dug out. Also a large forest with two building areas included. Custom farm shop and custom farm restaurant. Large building area available for purchase. Custom production factory containing three production points. 66 fields and meadows. No sleep trigger is installed, so you can place the sleep trigger down wherever you should so wish. If you install the Lamborghini R6250, it will show in the starting equipment. Now, there is a little bit of an asterisk there because I've not been successful in having that happen. So maybe maybe it is just not quite coded correctly in the map, or maybe it had to be pulled out in map testing and the description did not get updated. Special thank you to Alien Jim once again for allowing me to use his part vehicle mod, and special thanks to DJ Goham for his support and advice in making the map. Let's go ahead and load in. We are going to be using the mods. We typically use when we take a look at maps. That is additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, and precision farming. In addition to that, we do have the Lamborghini R6 250, as listed in the description, activated. I will tell you, if you load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find all the farms are pre-built exactly how you see them here in new farm mode, with the only exception being that you do not have any starting equipment. In addition, since you do not own any of the land, you'll need to buy that as well. But one thing to note is you do own most of the starting production that we own here in New Farmer Mode, with the exception of the BGA, because it is tied to your starting land. Now, when we load into the map, we kind of start here in our back garden area. Just come on out. And make our way around. And now that we're at our farm entrance, let's go ahead and take a look at our main PDA. This map does include all the standard crops available to us in FS22, as well as the premium expansion crops. To take a look at our lands overview, you're going to see we start by owning farmland ID 69, which includes a fair amount of land itself. In any alternate play mode, you can buy this for $561 and $48 and is basically going to be an area of 46 acres in size. We have our large starting area here. There is a production area down in the corner here located. We already own farmland ID 73. We also have two farms, farm 70 and 71 which we own at the start. We have two cow pastures at the main farm. Then we have a sheep pasture here and here as well. We have a large industrial area, which can be bought for $0. In fact, it is the map unbuyable land, typically the roads, the cities, the towns, and the cell points. And that can be bought again for $0. We have a large forest area, farmland 67, and 68 is the large quarry which does have stone that you can dig out and make use of. There is a buildable site here at Farmland ID 72 as well. And this is where the BGA is. And you can see this is tied with Farmland ID 69. Let's go ahead and take a look at our Farmland lease screen. The Farmland lease screen shows just all of the Bible farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any field or fields, what are included, and then lastly, how much is that farm going to cost us? As we can see here, it looks like the farmland and the field numbers are matching one for one for the most part, up until we get to, well, 
somewhere here in the 20s, and then the numbers seem to get a little bit skewed. We take a look at our field calculator screen. This is going to show us all of the viable fields and how large those fields are. We can then cross-reference this with the farmland at least screen and then figure out how much buying any one particular field is going to cost. Taking a look at our crop counter, we do have, as I said in the description, a custom crop counter for most of our crops. There is no schedule for sugar cane or cotton. So if you are playing with the crop counter enabled, you are not going to be able to plant sugar cane or cotton. Now, the map does include sugar cane and cotton. So if you do turn off the growth schedule, crop counter, then you could plant that and you can also sell those because they are listed in the prices screen. Looks like we have our standard red beet carrots and parsnips schedule that has been added to this. Quite possibly this map was probably sent up to Giants before the premium expansion was released. Take a look at our prices overview. We do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops that are available to us in FS22. In addition, we do have the ability to sell our eggs, wool, and milk, as well as our silage, hay, straw, and grass. As we move down through our base game production items, we once again have the ability to sell all of our base game production items, which is always a good thing to see on a map. Now, what we do not have is we do not have the ability to buy bulk lime, but we do have a stone crusher that we can get rid of our stones at. And then with respect to the platinum expansion, we do not have the ability to sell any of the platinum expansion production items, nor are there any platinum production items pre-placed on the map. So if you do wish to get into platinum production with that large forest, you're going to be putting down your own production as well as your own sell point. As we have seen with other maps, we do have support built in for all of the premium expansion production as well as the premium expansion crops. And lastly, if you are playing with pumps and hoses, you do have ability to sell that separated manure. Take a look at our starting fleet. You will see that we do not have the Lamborghini listed here. In addition, we're not going to see the Lamborghini listed when we take a look at our um, vehicle overview as well. Now, I think, as I said, that is maybe a slight coding error. There is some machines in here that have a fair number of operating hours on them and could do a little bit of repair, but overall, Things are all owned. None of it is leased. We do start out with 30 chickens and 30 cows at the main starting area. There is an empty cow pasture as well as two sheep pastures as well. We do have contracts available, as I mentioned. And as far as our starting production, we start up at owning the greenhouse. We have a BGA at the start. And then we have a bakery, grape juice processing area, a mini creamery, mini sugar mill and mini flour mill and as you can see from these listings these are basically smaller versions of the dairy the bakery the grape processing the sugar mill and the flour mill in fact this map has 18 production items built into it we're going to be talking about all of those in a little bit as well this map also does not have any collectibles let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet we start out with the Bure 6105 small tractor, as well as the Dutzfar 8280 TTV modded tractor and the Axion 800 from Kloss. We have our New Holland CH7.70 harvester that is paired up with the 28 foot Verifeed grain header, as well as the Nardi N 40BX header trailer. We have the JCB 451.70 Agri Pro telehandler, our 2017 pickup truck. For our trailers, we have the Half Pipe HP 20. And we've got some potato technology with the Ropa Keeler 2 potato harvester, as well as the GL860 Compacta potato planter and the Grimmy KS75 for potato topper. For sugar beets, we have the Rootster 604 sugar beet harvester and the FT300 sugar beet topper. We have the Prolander 7500 cultivator, as well as the Terrasim C6F seeder and the Agrimaz Falcon 3 planter. We have the Vantage 4300 trailed sprayer for herbicide and liquid fertilizer. The FarmTech DPW1800 bale transport trailer. We have the Anderson ProChop 150 bale shredder. The RA142 TMR mixer. As well as the MKS8 liquid tanker. And the ABI 1600 water trailer. We have the NOAA TTW140 animal transport trailer. And for our telehandler, 
We have the Universal Bucket and Pallet Fork. Taking a look at our mods and DLCs. We do have the modded Dutzfar Series 8 TTV that is tied to the map. And as you can see, we do have the Lamborghini R6 250 activated. But again, it's not showing up in the starting equipment. So I think something is not quite right with that coding. Coming in from our main road, we have our starting farm area here. We do start out with a fair bit of silage bales and hay bales. We have our telehandler, our bucket, and a pallet fork. Over here to our right, we have one of our cow pastures. This one has 30 cows in it. And then three place, we have our TMR mixer right over the food trigger. We have our straw trigger back there, conveniently placed with our bale shredder, which is nice to see. Our manure heap is located right here. There's no defining walls or anything. It's just going to be kind of here on this semi-flat area. And then the loading trigger for the manure heap is right here. Around the back, we have a spawn point, or a trigger point, I should say, for slurry. And then on the other side of the shed, we have our trigger point for our milk, with our trailer conveniently parked on top of that. And then we have the delivery point for our animals, and we can have a total of 60 cows in this facility. We got a large greenhouse here. And if we continue down the gravel drive, we have our second cow pasture. This cow pasture is set up to hold 150 cows. We're going to have our food trough located right here, and our milk trigger is located right there. In fact, we already have a little bit of milk stored up in this particular area, even though we don't have any cows. We've got our starting tractors immediately lined up here. Some vehicles and equipment storage. And then around the back, we have the first of some of the starting production that we own. This is our grape juice area, our mini grape processing facility. And again, it's set up just like the bigger grape processing facility. It's going to take grapes and it's going to produce raisins and grape juice. So we have our dump point, our interactive point. We have a little pile of manure over here as well. Our pallet spawn point for our grapes. And then we have our little bread and cakes, our little bakery if you will, that makes bread and cakes standard recipes. So we have our interactive icon, our dump point, and our pallet spawn point. And then the balance of our bar machinery is parked out here, kind of on the side of the hill. And that is pretty much the starting farm area right here but as you saw earlier the sturdy farm encompasses a lot more land and we're going to talk about that during the flyover portion of the video which is well coming up next couldn't help but notice that i forgot to mention about the precision farming soil map this map is making use of the french soil map that is a part of the precision farming mod so let's go ahead and see how that is getting applied to these fields off to the east, you can see we've got a decent strip of silty clay running down the entire far eastern side of the map. But a big hunk of the main farming area is going to be a combination of loam, sandy loam, and loamy sand.
Let's get a little bit of altitude and just kind of take a little quick look around. This map does have a fair bit of rolling hills, as you can kind of see. All the grass below you is all part of the main starting farm. Now, in total, this map has 18 productions built into it. 18. So we have the large greenhouse at the starting farm, as well as the BGA. We basically have two bakeries, one mini, one normal, a cereal factory. We have two grain mills, one mini, one normal. We have an oil mill, two grape processing areas. Again, one mini, one normal. We have two sugar mills, one mini and one normal. We have a tailor, a carpentry, two dairies. Again, one mini and one normal. We have a spinnery and we have a sawmill. So down from the starting farm, a little bit, we have a pond. This appears to be set up as a water trigger. There are two additional farms on the map, as I mentioned. The first one is located right here. All of the buildings on all of the farms, for the most part, are static. The only exception at the starting farm is you can get rid of the cow pasture that is separate from the building. And you can get rid of the large greenhouse. Everything else at the main starting farm, which is right off in the distance there, is permanently a part of the map. All of these buildings are permanently a part of the map. And then most of the area over here, which is the third farm, is again permanently part of the map. The only things you can change down here is the large silo complex, as well as the three-sided silage bunker. Everything else is permanently affixed. Now, if that doesn't really matter to you, then it's not that big of a deal. But if you are looking and hoping to make some changes to the farm areas here on this map, you're going to be sorely, sorely disappointed. Now, this section, this buildings, or these set of buildings, I should say, they are part of your starting farm. And this is where the rest of the mini productions that we own at the start are located. So within this building, we have our mini creamery. This one do buttermilk and a cheese. We have our mini flour mill. And we have our mini sugar mill. Located right down here. Now, in addition to these mini production points, which sadly we cannot place. And we're going to take a look at the build mode here in a moment we have this shed and within this shed we have two heaps we have a heap of sugar beets for our mini sugar factory and we have a heap of barley for our flour mill and I did test this I brought the telehandler down here with a bucket we can scoop these these are our products to make use of so I thought that was a really neat idea adding in the ability and you'll see some of this stuff is already producing product. Right, we've got some milk already spawned in at the animal area. In fact, the creamery is processing as we talk right now and producing butter, cheese, and other products. Now let's take a look at our build mode. You're going to find that under sheds, we do not have the ability to place anything custom. Everything down here is a base game or DLC. As well as silos, everything is a base game or DLC. Silos, extensions, containers, tools, and farmhouses. Sadly, under production, we also do not have the ability to put down any of the mini productions. I thought those were a really cool add-on. And I was really hoping to see those listed down here as placeable. As well as cell points, greenhouses, orchards, and generators. Now what we do have the ability to do is we do have a custom animal pin in this sheep pasture that we can place down. But that is pretty much the only custom placeable that is included with this particular map. Under our landscaping and painting, we have fairly standard FS22 ground textures. 
standard FS-22 plants and standard FS-22 trees. We've got a little bit of a residential area. These are all just deco buildings, but we do have two cell points. We have a little farm shop cell point and then a little cafe cell point over here. And then just past this farm, which we do own at the start, we have two sheep pastures. And again, this is land that we own at the start, somewhat removed from our starting farm area itself. All right, so we started up here. We also own 70 and 71, which are the two farms we just took a look at. 73 is where we're gonna find those mini productions. And now we are right here at this plot and this plot, which is still part of farmland ID 69. So we have our sheep pasture, we have our food, our water, we have our sheep drop-off point, 100 sheep in this pasture alone. And then over here, it's not marked in any way, but there is a little trigger that is showing right there. That is where I would best guess your wool is gonna spawn. There's no other indication anywhere else as to where that might possibly happen. So my best guess is going to spawn there. And then we have our second sheep pasture located right here. It's basically the same setup as the one we just took a look at. So we have our food trough, our water trough, and our sheep delivery point. 100 sheep again here across the road. And once again, I am speculating that this trigger right there I don't know if you can see it. That is possibly where we are going to find our wool pallet spawning. We'd like to see that marked out a little bit more clearly. We continue to make our way over here to the western side of the map. We have our large industrial park. This is where the rest of the productions are gonna be found. So we have our sugar mill, we have our tailor, our spinnery, our oil mill, our great processing facility, our dairy, our flour mill, our cereal factory, our carpentry shop, as well as our bakery. Our animal dealer is going to be located down here in the southwest corner. We have our pickup trigger as well as our cell point. And we make our way up the western side of the map. We're going to traverse over a large forested area. That does include two building sites. Now I will tell you that these building sites are not flat. So if you are looking to make use of these two building sites, you will need to do a little bit of landscaping to maybe smooth them out a bit. Uh, because if you just start willy nilly placing buildings, you may be a little surprised at the results. So we have one building site below. Then we have a smaller building site kind of to the north of that. And that is directly south of the sawmill, south of the BGA. And then here we have the large quarry that does have a fair amount of stone pre-placed. And this quarry is quite, quite expansive with three different levels. And all three levels have a fair bit of stone just kind of spawned in here right and ready ready to start your digging and i guess massive massive lime production millions upon millions of dollars to be made here processing stone into lime or 
However else you might want to do it. Now coming across the northern part of the map, we have the rest of our cell points and production. So we have our sawmill. The BGA, which again we own at the start in new farmer mode. It is tied to the starting farmland area. With a biomass heating plant. And this is a really cool setup. This is the uh, farm shop. I kind of like this. I like this setup where we got kind of old farm machinery set up here as well. And then, you know, you're going to be buying your new farm machinery. We have our fuel point as well as a restaurant cell point. Another restaurant cell point there. Then we have our farm shop located right here. And then we have a farm restaurant as it is named in the PDA, located right here. Let's head back over here to our vehicle shop. We're gonna get our Mahindra and do our drive and we're gonna take a closer look at all of the other areas on the map, including the other two possible player farms. Again, we own all of those at the start. And then this is our final kind of large building site. But again, it's not flat, as you can see. So if you do intend to do any sort of building on any of these building sites, you're gonna to wanna to come in and do a bit of landscaping and prep to the area. At our dealer, we're gonna to have to go inside to get to our dealer trigger. And with our Mahindra purchased, we have our dealer trigger located right here. We do have corner markers indicating this large area as the dealer trigger. And our new vehicle spawn point is over on the other side of the dealer area. We have our old used stuff on that side. And then this is where our new stuff is going to spawn. It's a decent sized area for the new vehicles and equipment to spawn in at. Right across the street, we've got conveniently located our gasoline, our diesel, our fuel area. a pizzeria style cell point right next to that and then a kind of a second pizzeria restaurant area right beside our large building site and across the street from that, we have our stone crusher. We're going to have to figure out the proper way to get into here, but... So here we have our stone crusher. I have an interesting area for the stone crusher, I would say. And what kind of is set up as a, uh, what I would perceive as kind of a residential area, but we've got Delivery vans, we've got construction equipment, 
large trucks, so I'm not really sure what this area is. It's kind of supposed to um, it's supposed to emulate. Here we have our biomass heating plant. To the left. It's going to take us over to the sawmill. All right, so we have our wood chip spawn point. Those are pallet spawn point, interactive trigger. We have a wood and log dump point and our wood cell trigger. These are kind of interesting areas. We're going to find areas like this kind of over at the industrial park as well. Feels like kind of parking area, area for obviously trailers and, and trucks to be parked. Maybe excess goods to be stored down there. This road is going to loop around, access all of these fields. Now their map, this map does have fences, does have stone walls. Those do have collisions, but as you can see here, the hedgerows, for the most part, are collision free. We've got, this is a row of trees. That's what we're running into there. A large quarry, as we just saw. And this is a large building site associated with the quarry. So you put down additional stone processing buildings here. Once again, it's not flat, right? So you're gonna need to be cautious about how you are placing things. Now let's talk about our scoring metrics. We're going to begin the map a full point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such. With 18 productions included on this map, we definitely have set a fairly good benchmark and high point on that particular metric. We are going to begin the map a full point with respect to having the ability to sell all of our basic crops, production items, and animal outputs as well. Now, while the custom row schedule does not reflect the ability to plant or harvest sugarcane or cotton, if those are crops that for whatever reason you are wanting to play on this map, you can just turn off the growth schedule and have at it because we can indeed sell those things at various sell points. So here we have our BGA. And I did try to sell the biogas plant and I was successful in doing so. So if you do sell the BGA, this large facility does go away, although there are some street lights. Those street lights will remain. And of course the deco elements are going to remain. But if you want to get rid of the BGA and if you want to get rid of these three-sided bunkers, they are sellable. Well, that was quite the tumble. All right, here we have what's listed as the farm shop. Where we come and sell all of our various goods produced at the mini productions. 
not a large area for your dump point. So be cautious about coming in here with small trailers. And I don't see you bringing in that big DPW bale trailer into there. But down here we have the farm restaurant cell point. What an upscale looking restaurant this is. Just think you could uh you could go to the restaurant, eat outside on a windy day or a slightly breezy day when the farm's out there, farmers are out there doing their their root crop harvesting and well, creating a giant cloud of dirt and dust that blows across over your tables and your food. Seems like an excellent, excellent idea for those city folk to really experience country living. Now, with respect to farms being customizable, well, the map is gonna take a pretty big hit on that metric because of the fact that there's just so much that is not customizable. Here's our chickens. I was, I saw that from the road. I, I saw this colorful thing from the road. I'm like, what is that over there? And I come over here and I realize, you know what? We didn't, we didn't see our chickens up here. I just completely forgot about we had chickens. I didn't even see them during the initial look around the map because, well, the darn chickens are hidden. Here they are. Cluck, cluck. Here we are. 300 chickens in this facility. We have our egg point and then we have our food trough down here. I almost completely zoned out on our chickens. So we're giving the map a quarter of a point, 0 0.25, just a quarter, because pretty much every building at the starting farm, other than the greenhouse and the cow pasture, is permanently a part of the map. Every building at this farm that we're about to take a look at is built in. We cannot change it. And then most of the buildings over at the third farm, which we're gonna take a look at, is also built in and unchangeable. Now, I have been been told that uh, in in the UK, in Britain, in England, the uh, pretty much farmers don't get to change things on their own land because the government is is like saying, nope, nope, that's how things look. So it's realistic to the maps area that you're pretty much stuck with however the thing looks like by however it was built by who knows who before you. Now, this is a game, and the game needs to work for players of all interests. So I can fully understand that. And for those players that are looking to replicate that sort of gross restriction, um, well, then you could just choose to not customize things. But players who are looking for a bit more freedom and liberal use of um, their own styling at these farm areas, they should have the ability to make those types of changes. So I'm just going to, uh, you know, let you know that on this map, this farm is exactly how you see it. If there are buildings in the way, you'd like to open it up because maybe you're not the best driver. You're going to find it a little difficult to get around these areas. Then maybe, just maybe, this farm and or this map might not be the best suited to your specific playstyle. That's why we have our metrics and that's why we're going to talk about it. Not every map is suited to every player. And not every player is going to work for every map.
let's just double back real quick. We're going to hit our cafe cell point, which is right here. And then our farm kind of grocery area, which is right around here. Again, really small, really tight getting into those. I think this map is going to be best suited for small and medium machinery, regardless of field sizes. We're going to skip over the mini production area. I think we saw that in good enough detail during the fly around. Here is our third farm option. And again, we own all of these farms at the start in a new farm mode. So all of these buildings are also permanent. With the exception of the three-sided silage bunker and the farm silo. So we can, we can get rid of the bunker. The town will allow us to get rid of this monstrosity, this giant steel silo that completely takes away from the historical look and feel of everything else. But other than that, we are pretty much stuck with how things look. Just to the west of this farm, we're going to find the two sheep pastures that we talked about. One on the left, one on the right. We could put down more sheep pastures. That is the only real placeable that is custom to the map. And let's make our way up here to our industrial park. Our buildings where appropriate are using the new texturing technique as well as ground textures. We're going to map a half a point here because the custom buildings, the buildings that are at the uh, farms, for the most part are, while they're not using the new texturing technique and while they're not grossly low res horrible building textures from days gone by they they are flat textures so keeping to our scoring metric once again while they're not awful they are not making advantage of the new functionality that is part of farm sim 22 and that is again where our scoring metrics have their basis on is what sets aside this map as a Farm Sim 22 map, as opposed to a map for Farm Sim 17, 19, 15, or earlier. We have our animal dealer and our dealer trigger and our animal dealer cell point for separated manure, bales, hay straw grass, and such. Welcome to our industrial site, where all of the other productions are placed. These are all base game productions. So we are base game dairy, carpentry, our cereal factory, our dairy, our flour mill, our grape processor for raisins and grape juice, our oil mill, our spinnery. We've got some kind of parking zones over here, right? Again, not super flat, so not really, really set up to be just instant plop and go for additional productions. And this land can be bought while this is not technically farmland, it can be bought for zero dollars. So we have our sugar mill there, and then we have our tailor, which is the final production that has been pre-placed. So that's gonna leave us with our final scoring metric. 
which is player in interactive areas being clearly marked. We're going to take off a quarter point there as well because, again, we've got some areas that are not super clear. For example, the two spawn points for wool at the two sheep areas. We would like to have seen that flagged a little bit clearer. And as such, we are then taking off those points. So that's going to give this map a score of 3.5 out of 5. It wouldn't take much to uh, boost this up to, uh, to above a 4, right? The ability for players to delete select buildings if they want to, not that they have to, but if they want to, would I think open this map up to a larger player base by far. Um, there are players out there that just will avoid a map if they are locked in to the farm set up exactly how it is presented to them. That's just how they're gonna play. I think it would go up pretty easy to just clearly indicate those sheep areas and bump that metric up to a full point there. And those two alone, they're gonna put this well above a 4.0 out of five. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below with respect to this particular map. Is this a map that you're looking forward to giving a go on? What are your thoughts with respect to fixed farm buildings? And here we have that large, the largest of the two placeable areas for forestry. And again, you can see it's not, not the flattest area. And we know how farms and buildings really don't like non-flat areas. So you're going to want to come in here and do a little bit of ground prep before you do put down your first few buildings. Until next time. Happy farming.